Well, this next driver we're going to talk to is a regular with the Ironhead Sprint Series, as well as mixes it up with 360 Sprint cars. And his family is a fine supporter of this program with Dave's Home Supply. Talking about Bailey Hibbert out of Medford, Oregon, driving car number one. Talking about what it's like to be a dad. Also, how he juggles his busy work schedule with a racing schedule. That's coming up next after these messages. Dave's Home Supply specializes in cabinets, flooring, and countertops. Visit their website at daveshomesupply.com to look at products, services, financing, and even a free estimate. Are you looking for bookkeeping, payroll, or income tax services? Then check out the folks at For You Simple Bookkeeping. They are a licensed tax preparer throughout the entire United States. For more information, click on the link in the description. This broadcast is brought to you by Meat Freaks Jerky Club. Get the best jerky the world has to offer straight to your door by visiting meatfreaksjerkyclub.com. Pick your box and plan, tell them where to ship, and receive and enjoy. Log on to meatfreaksjerky.com and use promo code SPEED. Well, Bailey Hibbert is joining me on the phone, and Bailey is a driver that has had a pretty sensational year. And Bailey, 2023, you've got some good numbers uh, to, your, to your name with five podiums, seven top fives, ten top tens, and right around 13 starts. Um, how would you rate for yourself how your racing season has went for you, though? Honestly, so far, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with it. Um, I do feel that I'm kind of stuck in the twilight zone a little bit in regards to not getting the win so far because I feel like we have the speed to do that throughout tonight and uh, just can't really finish super strong like we've been wanting to. Um, hats off to all of our guys and, and obviously to, to Jake and Camden because they've been really consistent. And uh, I think with the IHS series, it is one of the more um, – competitive series that I've seen. I mean, we travel up to Washington and go to all these other places and it seems like our series kind of dominates everybody else around. And I think that that makes for a really good racing uh, between the top couple cars and it makes it really hard to kind of finish where we've been finishing, but um, we're going to stay as consistent as we can and try and finish off the year strong with the, uh, the IHS series here at Medford um, and just kind of see what we can put together with our crew and guys. So we were talking about this off the air before we got in the interview. Five podium mm -hmm. finishes, uh, including the last time you were out, August 12th and 11th at Willamette Speedway. You finished third both nights and then a pair of thirds on July 7th at Willamette and July 8th at Grays Harbor. But your best run was uh, June 24th at Southern Oregon Speedway. You finished second. I mean, a really good streak of third place finishes. I mean, and I know... That's got to be frustrating because it's like you're right there. You're almost at P1. But but in the in the big picture, it's shown a lot of consistency. Yeah, totally. I think that we have a really good car to start off. I think the past, like, six races, we've qualified quick time, uh, five out of those six races. Um, so with that being said, we have a really good car to start off. I think it's just going to take those final adjustments in order to, to get the car where we need it to be in order to be – uh, that number one top spot. Cause like I said, our series is like I said, the most, most competitive that I've been able to race against so far. Um, even compared to like the 360 classes, um, just because everybody's so much closer as far as power and it comes more down to driver, I would say in most instances. Yeah. It's been a fun series to cover, been a fun series to watch as well. Um, where you get a, a group of guys with a lot of mixed backgrounds. You got Camden, who's the who's the dwarf car extraordinaire, but yet he's taken and this isn't you know this isn't new to him sprint cars. He's doing really well, and then you have Jake Wheeler, who who's uh, who can be a really competitive and very fast 360 driver, and also some 410 experience. And you make throw him in the mix, and you and your dad's versatility of running both limited in 360s and that's just four drivers and that you know you get the you get uh, uh some more spice and and sugar from some of the other competitors that frequent with the group i mean charlie thompson you know a, a veteran racer he's he's a guy not to sleep on as well yeah totally and i think that with the series it's definitely starting to attract more people like i mean we had garen linder around with us not too long ago at medford and then uh, i believe he ran a race at roseburg as well and i think the attraction is there um, the payout is also doing really well, which we'd love to thank our sponsors for that as that's a huge, huge help in trying to grow our series and everything of that sort. And uh, uh, like I said, I think I think our series, is, again, is the most competitive and most of the top guys have been running their whole lives. So since I was four years old, I've been running race cars and I know Camden's about in the same boat and same as Jake. So 
just off those couple guys, I mean, those are the top guys. They they have more experience than most people will have in their entire career as they sit now. Well, and you mentioned the payout that two day weekend at, at Willamette, two grand to win a night. It was just like holy macaroni. That's that's incredible, and that's really good because a you know the more the mer- you know the more money you make, it tends to make drivers happy and make the you know fund them better. Um, and the other thing too, is it means that, that there are sponsors out there that are attracted to supporting this deal and making sure that it succeeds. And the times I've been at Willamette, the crowds have been exceptionally well as, uh, uh, um, as well, you know, to compliment when you guys are there. So that's, that's a, that's a kind of a total package kind of deal, which is super cool for people that don't know anything about the Ironhead sprint series. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of uniqueness that goes with it. Like, for example, uh, IHS does a really good job of kind of helping the racers do everything they need to do and, and getting parts and stuff like that. For example, um, some of the sponsors that we have on the series, uh, every week, every two days show, we give away a right rear tire, um, a top wing, a nose wing, and then fuel for the night for that car, um, which is just something really unique that I don't see a lot of series is doing, but it's just kind of helping promote um, more drivers to come out and show support. And what's really cool, too, is there's healthy relationship among the drivers. And not to say that it doesn't exist anywhere else, like you guys are the exception to the rule, but but I would say maybe a little bit of an extra mile is there's no animosity of, yeah, we're all here to win, but we're also here to have fun, kind of like a club-like deal. But I say that not thinking that it's like a cupcake division where you guys are just out you know, drinking wine and putting around. Like, you guys are there to win, but making sure that you guys have a good time as well. Sure. There's definitely a fine line with all of that. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, me and Garen Linder ended up getting together, and it was totally just a racing deal. Um, and I, it, didn't, it doesn't seem like there's any sort of hostility there uh, between me and him. And so um, that's always kind of nice. But, I mean, we've raced each other for a long time, and so we try and make our intentions clear with every move that we make. And as a driver, um, you try and make those split, split second decisions so that, that way it doesn't cause those things. But sometimes it's kind of inevitable when both of you guys are running really hard. So, Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, thankfully you don't have got, you know, knock on wood, I say this and you don't have guys pulling spark plug wires or doing anything, <laughs> any crazy mumbo jumbo. So. Yeah. I, I, I have a hard time thinking it will get to that point, but um, <laughs> I, I do think that the racing is super interesting and fun to watch, but California is definitely a different ballpark when it comes to that. So. Yes, it's, it, it gets a little a little more intense with a capital I, that's for sure. Definitely. Um, and for you, for 2023, we should let the listeners know that, uh, you know, 13 starts, you haven't ran a full, a full slated schedule because you've been busy helping your dad with the family business, Dave's Home Supply, great supporter of getting up to speed and uh, other pro- uh, media projects. But, but also uh, you, you and your, your lovely partner, you guys went to Hawaii. Um, so you've been, and now you're a dad too. So you've been really having to juggle a lot of balls on top of oh, yeah. trying, to, trying, yeah. to, trying to be a race car driver. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, life has seemed to kind of uh, get in the way a little bit, but I wouldn't really want it any other way. Um, with our class specifically, I mean, we're, we're a working man's class. So that's part of the reason it's such a great thing because everybody there under, has the understanding of, of each other's hard work and what kind of goes into a weekly weekly basis in order to get the cars out there because it's a lot of some of the teams that we run with or used to run with, for example, like when Tanner Holmes was running uh, in our series, that's what they did full time for a job. And so it's really hard to be competitive with people like that. And I think that um, with life stuff specifically, it goes a long way and shows a lot when we get these other drivers out there um, that bust their tails off and, and are there to support us. And we really appreciate all that stuff. And being a dad, how life changing has that been? Man, it's probably it's it's the coolest thing I've ever been a part of. I can't really, I can't really explain how it makes me feel, but it's it's the coolest thing I've been able to experience in my life so far. And it's a daughter, right? It... Yeah, her name's Sophia. Uh, she turned one in July on July 11th, so she's doing she's doing really well. Starting to say words, and she's been cruising around, walking around, and starting to run now. And, nice. Uh, she's a super smart person and I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what her future holds for her well and that uh that's when life gets real when they start running and and getting <laughs> good well when they get climbing that's that's when the 
that's when the fear factor gets kicked up a couple of notches. But it's so cool, and it's it's a it's a rewarding job. Sometimes when they get older, you know, spoiler alert. Maybe your dad can tell you this too. It feels like there's days that aren't aren't that rewarding, but it is cool, and it it makes time got go by so fast though. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's I, something that I've always wanted. I mean, we've always had a big family since I was a kid. I'm the oldest of, of three other siblings that I have, and. Um, I, I want that as well, having a big family and, uh, uh, racing in general has been sort of a family thing between me and my dad and, and Chelsea even being the next racer. Um, she ran three sixties back East at Knoxville and all sorts of stuff. So we, we kind of have a decent bloodline going for her and a really good understanding if she ever wanted to get into a car or anything of that sort. So, um, yeah, I really love it a lot. And Chelsea, is she completely written off racing ever again? Um, she's, she's a little indecisive at times. Yeah, um, yeah. I know, I know she misses it quite a bit and I would love for her to get into a car. Um, I've offered her to, to even get in mine a couple, a couple periods of time. And, uh, uh, I think as Sophia gets older, the stress factor of her being at the braces without her watching her will go away and maybe mm-hmm. she'll get back into a car and maybe run a couple of races by HF. We'll see. Sure, sure. Well, you don't have to uh, smudge up the number at all. You guys share the same number. I mean, I, I didn't realize <laughs> that until I just thought of that. So, except you, she needs to throw a B in there. But occasionally, you you've had to throw a B on there too. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, it would work out fine. But she's she's definitely was a really good driver, super renowned down at Red Bluff. She had I think more wins in the two hundred and fifty class when we were kids than any other driver in like the season of twenty eleven or twenty twelve or whenever I was running down there. But um, she definitely has more, a little bit more experience than I do in that aspect and definitely a lot more 360 experience with, with that being said, I've kind of struggled a little bit with that just cause the power difference is, is quite a big thing to get used to as far as throttle control and things like that. And, uh, I plan on doing that a little bit more, but I, I definitely do love the, uh, the iron head series. And I think the potential behind it is exponential in comparison to other classes at the moment. Well, and you have something that's really cool is you have somebody that's did it before and so when there's struggles they know what those struggles are or i would i would at least assume that that's your guys's relationship there's a lot of empathy when you feel like man like i feel like we got good speed but i just don't know what's going on i'm getting for it's because it's easy to get frustrated at yourself it's a very humbling sport but when you have somebody there to support you and knows exactly the steps that you're walking in that's got to be pretty comforting Definitely. I mean, perspective is huge. Having somebody outside of the car that's not running next to you, but watching you make your laps consistently and, and having that same sort of thought process as a racer and, and being able to kind of help manipulate my laps so that, that way the next time we go out we're faster is super, super helpful. Yeah, there's nothing like, I'm sure you've ran into people like this before when you're going through a problem that only that you have experienced, right? Like I, I'm racing mm-hmm. a car or I'm announcing a race and it's like, man, you know, I messed up on this or this didn't go my way or you wouldn't believe this to happen and stuff. And someone mm-hmm. just goes, Oh man, I totally know what you're, what you're going through. It's like, you've never did this before. What are you talking about? <laughs> so <laughs> you don't know yeah, what it is. Like. So, yeah, definitely. Kids at school kind of always had animosity towards, towards me as a racer. And I think they just thought it was easy and just turning left, but it's definitely a whole different ball game. When you get to a, uh, seven or 800 pound, uh, seven or 800 horsepower race car and only weighing 1400 pounds and going around the track at top speeds of over 100 miles an hour so yeah with with 2023 kind of it's it's hard to believe that we're almost in september so we're kind of getting those waning days of the races in the pacific northwest uh obviously the iron head sprint series going to close that out are you going to try and make some races later in the year i know there's western states finals at roseburg obviously stuff in california will kind of be rolling or once the ironhead deal shuts down on the 16th of september at southern oregon is that kind of it for you guys for 2023 and get ready to rebuild for 24 i would like to say no um but at the same time it just kind of depends on what life throws our way um between all the family stuff and everything we have going on um I would love to get back into the car and run a 360 down in California. I think that once the IHS season is over, I'm a little bit more um, adept to want to do that just because of uh, uh, my worry right now is I don't really want to run it a ton because if I crash the car, I don't have time to fix it before the next IHS race. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just with all the stuff that we have going on. So I think once IHS is over, I'll have more free time on my hands to be able to go and put more laps in the 360 because in reality, the more and more laps that I get, I think the more consistent I'm getting as we go on. And I, I think it's starting to show as far as qualifying and the finishes that we've been having recently. And so um, I'd like to get all that stuff under my belt prior to next season for sure. <laughs> Well, and pretty important that the next set of races for the series is at Southern Oregon Speedway, a place that you've got a lot of laps at and have uh, obviously your best finish of the year was second there. So that's got to feel good closing out at least that portion with the with with the tour, the IHS tour um, at a place yeah. of, of success and familiarity. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they changed the track, I think, like a year or two ago, and so it's taken me a little bit to get used to it, but it is a really fun facility to race at, and I look forward to being there and uh, just being around home. Um, obviously, racing in your backyard is is way better than trying to drive four hours after the races to get home, so yes. um, I do appreciate the home races a lot more. No doubt. Home games are nice. They're few and far between sometimes for me, but I, I can co- I can I can. I can connect with you on that, like we were just talking about. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, uh, we mentioned uh, Dave's Home Supply. Uh, that's, that's you know, the family business, great supporter of this program. Um, you guys seem to be super busy, um, and, but also uh, super supportive of racing, which is a great thing. And you guys always seem to be having some great stuff going on, great products for sale and, and great deals on, on things. Yeah, definitely. I'm one of the project managers down there, so I mean, we're we're doing a lot of commercial and residential products, and and we really like to help people with with all their home needs and stuff like that. And uh, we specialize basically in just interior finishes, so cabinets, countertops, floors, showers, that sort of stuff. And um, it's done us well so far. We've been in business for about 20 years now, um, so we have definitely quite a bit of experience under our belt, and uh, uh, we'd love to work with you if, if anybody's interested in it. Like that. Yeah, and you guys do you do estimates and quotes, and you guys got a great website of all all the uh, all the things that you offer or can order for people. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we can even do online orders, ship it direct to somebody's house um, with cabinet orders, flooring, or, or or you name it, kind of whatever you need for that sort of stuff. And then uh, just recently, we opened a division for building houses, so we're doing our first subdivision and trying to get that rolling and. Uh, uh, that's been a learning curve on, on my part. My dad's kind of already been a part of that. And uh, I'm trying to soak up all the information that we can so that we can keep growing the business and continue to support not only the racing series, but um, all of our family and friends that are involved with our business. No doubt. That has got uh, that has definitely got to be a huge learning curve from, uh, you know, like it's, it's one of those things when you're getting stuff or selling stuff, but uh, putting it together, boy, it's like Christmas every day, I'm sure, sometimes. <laughs> You know, it's, it's everything. There's a learning curve, and there's a, a span where, span of time where you're kind of struggling to figure certain things out. But um, oddly enough, home building is not the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. So mm -hmm. um, I would argue that it's probably easier than what I'm doing now. But it sure. is a really cool thing to be a part of, and uh, uh, we'll keep kind of rolling with it. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. And there's a lot of pride in it too. When 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 yeah, it's yeah. when it's finished, of course, you know it's the process getting there. Sometimes that you can tear your hair out. Oh yeah, I mean even even behind the scenes, like on race week, me and my dad are working uh, fifteen to eighteen hour days. We're over there painting the houses and installing cabinets, and uh, just to tell everybody we're we're doing all the finishing and stuff ourselves. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, craftsmanship that goes into it between me and him. And we try and do the very best job that we can. And uh, uh, it just adds to our to our work schedule. And that's part of the reason that we haven't run in a ton um, is, is because of that. So, Well, you have, you have obviously these busy projects going on for work and then occasionally racing and then being a dad. Um, you and Chelsea, it's, you know, uh, the grandparents are on, are on baby watch. What do you guys like to do when it, you're not in the shop or not uh, not working? I don't really know. I kind of get bored when, when I'm not working. So I would say that with that being said, I don't, that's pretty much my life at this point. And okay. uh, I, I really enjoy doing it. So it keeps me busy and keeps me out of trouble. So 
Well, and if you, I mean, Hawaii, I guess that, that was a big trip. I, I guess my, I, I might've just answered my next question, but like any, <laughs> any big family plans of like some exotic destinations, uh, uh are you going to be taking, taking the kiddo to Disneyland anytime soon? You know, I'd love to do that. I just want her to be old, old enough and cognitive enough to remember it is the only thing. Um, sure. Hawaii was super cool, but her being a year old, or I guess at that point she was less than a year old, um, was, was kind of difficult as far as the flight there. Cause I don't know if all you guys have been there, but, um, it's, it's pretty much a direct flight for like six hours. And so trying to keep a baby occupied on an airplane is one of the more challenging things that I have experienced. Sure. Um, so, but I mean, it was an amazing trip nonetheless. Um, I got to go there with Chelsea and her family and, we had a really amazing time out there. It was kind of a birthday present between me and Lori um, because she, her birthday is the 31st and mine's the 22nd of May. And uh, uh, we had a really amazing time there. It was a super great experience as I haven't traveled very much. So um, I've kind of always kept to and, and kind of kept my nose to the grindstone. And it's kind of refreshing because Chelsea isn't necessarily that way. She likes to go out and travel and, and do that sort of thing, which is, something that I need every once in a while because if it wasn't for that, I'd probably work myself to death. So yeah, you got, you got to change it up and you just, you just solved the mystery of what was, what's, you know, the hardest thing you said, building a house and finishing a house wasn't the hardest thing in the world. You just, I think you answered it, occupying a baby on a six hour flight. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so nice. That's super cool. Um, uh, I think we covered everything, but, uh, for, for your upcoming race schedule, and this can go for your dad as well. Uh, you know, what's the best place for, for the Hibbard racing team to look for like maybe an upcoming schedule or results or any of, if you guys have an apparel run to purchase that, any websites or social media pages. Um, with that being said, I think that we have our, our booths at pretty much every IHS race, and so that would be the time to buy it. So when Southern Oregon's IHS race, I think that's September what, 11th and 12th or something like that, um, we'll have the booth up there at the top of Medford, and we'll be selling um, all the IHS merch and as well as ours as well. Um, so, yeah, I hope to see everybody there, and hopefully we get a good crowd as it's going to be the last, uh, uh, I think, really big IHS race of the year. Awesome. Awesome. And then uh, people that you want to thank, it can be individuals that you talked about or, or sponsors that you'd like to send shout outs to. You know, there's so much that goes into racing, but I don't think I have, I can't thank everybody enough that becomes a part of it. Um, there's so many people that help us as, as a smaller team uh, be able to do what we love to do. And um, Rick Raff's a huge part of that. He helps uh, assist us in the series by following us and uh, uh, kind of helping being the parts person. Uh, when it comes to the other cars or when we're on tour and we need help, that sort of thing. Um, I have my crew guys, which is Wyatt Carson, uh, my dad, if, if he's not running. And then uh, Anthony is another huge help when it comes to tech and all that stuff and making sure that our races are as fair as possible. Um, <clears throat> and then we have all of our sponsors, which Dave's Home Supply is obviously the biggest one, um, as that's our family company. And then uh, uh, kind of everybody that helps put this thing together. I mean, it's, it's not a, a single person deal. So there's there's a lot as far as the ins and outs of, of the race car go in order to get it ready on a weekly basis for sure. Well, awesome. It's been great. It's been great catching up with you, doing a check-in, and looking forward to uh, seeing how the rest of the season goes. And hopefully hopefully that final race weekend with uh, IHS isn't the last race of 2023, but uh, if it is, we'll be definitely checking in with you when 2024 rolls, al- rolls around. That sounds good, man. Yep, I hope you look forward to the IHS race. Like I said, I think we have a lot of speed going into it, as well as my dad. I mean, he was running second the first race at Willamette, and Lou is right to retire, unfortunately. So I think that we have a lot of speed going into, the, into that weekend, and uh, we're going to hopefully capitalize on it. And also, many, many thanks for you and your family for supporting this program too. Because without that, it would be it'd be doable, but it'd be it'd be harder to do it. <laughs> for sure, man. I mean, you do a lot for us as well, doing these uh, podcasts and stuff like that with all the racers that are a part of the series and even other series. I mean, it's really great for the sport to kind of get everybody's name out there. Um, as well as promoting all of our sponsors for the series and, and everything helps in that, in that aspect. So we really appreciate you as well. Well, that is going to do it for this interview. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button on whatever platform you found this interview at. It really helps us grow the channel and we greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, 
We'll be back with more content and interviews in the future. Be sure and have a great evening or a great rest of your day, whatever time you're listening.